Well, uh, welcome to Karen Bassi uh, from the University of California, Santa Cruz in Classics, who is in residence at the moment uh, as the convener at UCHRI of the History of Mortality uh, Resident Research Group. And we're here just to talk a bit about the work of um, the resident. Um, so why don't we begin just by saying a bit what the group has been doing, what it's about, how you conceived of it, uh, and where the work has gone. <coughs> well, those are a lot of questions, and I, <laughs> I hope I can answer them appropriately. I mean, it, you know, why did this topic come to my mind? And um, it, what we've learned, or what I've learned during these last 10 weeks. So, so we've been spending 10 weeks talking about death. Um, one might think that that would be um, not a, an uplifting uh, exercise, but in fact it has been. Um, and what, one of the things that, it, that came out of this uh, group, and actually it was even before when we had our first meeting last, last year, um, is the extent to which thinking about uh, what it means to face death um, is oftentimes uh, expressed in uh, personal anecdotes, mm -hmm. the personal story. So one of the things we, we were talking about uh, all through the, the um, residency were what ki who's, who's allowed to speak, uh, when, where, at what time, when, um, and in what kinds of ways, confession, um, um, witnessing, um, the narrative of auto a biography or autobiography, um, and so I guess uh, if you ask me where this became something I, I would wanted to work on, I, I'm of the age now where the number of years behind me is m many more than the number of years in front of me. I mean, it's just a fact. Um, so that personal uh, story, together with, um, I was working on a book at the time on uh, the ways in which visual perception uh, in a number of ancient texts give meaning to the past. And of course, tombs uh, are <laughs> um, those objects that stand out in a landscape in particular and remind one of um, one's impending death. And then, uh, as I read in uh, you know, s some uh, preliminary bi bibliography, it, it, the relationship between the knowledge, the human knowledge of death and I know I'm going off on a few tangents here, David, so um, the knowledge, the human knowledge of death, or the question is, is that knowledge only human? And in fact, does that knowledge make us human in some way? Um, during the course of this, these 10 weeks, that question has been at the front of our, of our discussions and um, you know, with the caveat that, it, that humans are, are probably not the only creatures that have knowledge of their impending deaths. Um, so uh, we had sort of two uh, you know, divided, we, we, I divided it into two separate uh, five week uh, units of the residency. And the first five weeks, uh, people brought in readings uh, that, the hope was that these readings would transcend the number of um, disciplines and so forth that were represented. And I, so let me back up there a bit and say that we had people, uh, I'm a classicist, I, I'm a Hellenist, um, work mostly on Greek tragedy and, and historiography. Um, we had uh, a, a person working in vampire films, um, the undead. We had a person working on um, religious uh, uh, pilgrimages. We had two people working in medical humanities. So this question too having to do with the humanities in relationship to some social science mm -hmm. work I think would also be part of our discussion here. Um, we had uh, people working in Native American traditions. Um, so it, it was just a broad range of people and that was the, uh, it was both it's sort of strange to say this, it was the glue and at the same time the kind of the thing that sort of at, at various times would pull us apart because what we, we, we really needed to do was find some common 
ground. And then the question becomes, are we talking universals or are we talking particulars? And, and that, of course, had to um, be part of our conversation pretty much every week. So the first five weeks, we, you know, each person brought in some common readings. We discussed them. And the second five weeks, we each presented our works in progress. Um, that, uh, along with some secondary readings of people or primary readings of people wanted to, um, to do that. I, I, you know, was that a good way to organize things? I, I think in the end, yes, it, it did work out. I mean, it allowed people to be working on their own projects and to be conceptualizing those projects within the larger uh, collaborative uh, endeavor here. So, um, you know, I, it, it's a topic that uh, demands uh, a kind of, well, as I said earlier, a certain kind of personal investment. Uh, and that kind of investment speaks to also the question of what are we doing as scholars and what are we doing <coughs> as humanists when we speak about uh, facing death. So, um, you know, I can go on and talk about the kinds of things that we, that we, we came well, to, but maybe you have some. Well, the, yeah, I mean, I have <coughs> a, a couple of questions. I mean, there's a question of temporality, yes, right, yes, in yes. going in both directions. I mean, on the one hand, uh, there's, you know, the drive on the part of some, not least in our culture, to put death off, That's right. right, to prolong life uh, in a variety of different ways, whether it's by, um, you know, um, making one's body younger, younger in some sense or, uh, or injecting <laughs> all kinds of things in one or whatever. Um, so that, that in one direction, um, I mean, p putting off its inevitability. And on the other is the instantaneity of death, as we've just witnessed, you know, uh, with a couple of instances, both in Paris and more locally in San Bernardino uh, in the last two weeks. Um, you know, so one can turn the corner and face death, so to speak, uh, or not know that one's facing death uh, as, one, as one begins one's day, and, uh, or, or ends it for that matter. And um, and it's it's curious how how temporality sort of factors into um, um, the 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 time of life and the time of death, right? Well, I, you know, you've really um, put your finger on one of the principal uh, sort of driving conceptual categories through the entire ten weeks, um, because a number of different um, specific temporalities came into view. Not that these would not come into view with uh, other topics that one might be thinking about, but um, duration, for example. I mean, this is where social science research and humanities research, I think, does have, uh, uh, comes together in some interesting ways. Whether you're talking about antiquity or modernity or post-modernity or medieval times, it, the, one of the, th the, the variables has to be um, both uh, the, the longevity rate, I mean, uh, how, how long are people living? Because this gives you a sense of futurity. What is the future of, of one's life? We die the moment we're born. I mean, that's a, that's a truism, right? Um, but uh, the risks along the way are different in particular uh, cultural, historical, geographical, geopolitical moments. As, as you mentioned, we've, we're seeing that here, uh, uh, you know, in our own time and place. But um, so there's, there's duration, there's futurity, um, different futurities as, as well. Uh, what about the, the, the concept of immortality? And, and you raised this issue as well. H how do we extend life? And this goes to the medical practitioners. Uh, and, and as I said, two of our members were, are working in medical uh, humanities. Um, and so d how do we uh, gauge those and how do we give that quality? You know, where does the quality of life and the quantity of life uh, <laughs> sort of, um, you know, there is an ancient um, myth, um, uh, um, uh, that, well, it's an ancient story that says, uh, you know, better never to have been born, and if you are, better to get out quickly. <laughs> and this is the sixth century BC. Um, so uh, <laughs> th that that question of what we're doing in between, um, and then there's the quotidian as opposed to the crisis, the crisis moment or the time of crisis as as opposed to life as a as a as a kind of accumulation of a number of discrete days, you know, and as you said, you wake up in the morning and we don't expect that we're not, or we go to bed at night, that's the one I think that's, a, uh, and not thinking that we're not going to wake up in, in the morning. 
Um, so yes, temporalities and uh, you know various temporalities, but again, focused within specific um, periods, uh, frameworks, geographies. The Hajj, for example, is a time. Um, and, and there too, recent events have shown us that, um, you know, going on the pilgrimage, which takes a particular uh, amount of time out of one's quotidian life, um, it is aimed at a kind of uh, immortality. And, the, and then, uh, as we've seen in, uh, you know, in uh, Mecca recently, that people who went there were um, uh, killed on, uh, on that scene. So um, these, the risks that are taken, this is another, uh, the question of risk. How does one assess that, either on a daily basis or in terms of um, crisis situations? So one of, our, uh, one of our participants is working on the Fukushima uh, disaster. How does time slow down or, or speed up mm -hmm. in, in, in a situation like that? Um, the Iraq war, some other things that we read, the, the kinds of bombs that were used and, and that, that, that uh, both civilians and um, and uh, military personnel were, were uh, uh, you know, came into contact with, um, these had r radioactive materials in them. Mm -hmm. And so this raises the question of slow death. Mm -hmm. I mean, death that you, s because people came home from the war or the people who were there at the time, then they're, uh, you know, they have uh, genetic uh, or other kinds of problems based on this. So they know they're dying, but it's, it's a kind of, th the death that might have taken place in the military action is extended out. So again, extension of time or, or um, in film, we, we, we watched a lot of movies and, uh, and we had some wonderful people who were experts in, in film and documentary film. So much of our discussion had, was around you know, the vis visibility of death. Um, and some um, theorists talk about the inability to uh, show death e on the screen. I mean, w in what interstices of that mm. moment, you know, of the of the of the uh, the, the images going by, mm. does does the body uh, succumb mm. to, to death? Um, and so, how to see death is is an mm. was another question that we raised. And to live with it. I yeah, mean, uh, yeah, and in, to live with that I mean, exactly, right, not, right? Not just in one's own being, yeah, but and in, and that in one's being in relation to in others relation so to others, yeah. because mm -hmm. uh, s some other theorists uh, whom we read uh, make the point that it is in the death of others that are that we have some idea of, um, because it's not in our own deaths, we mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't mm -hmm. know those, but um, but it's in the deaths of others. Um, and that relationship to others through this understanding of, uh, not an understanding of death, because death is ineffable. The death is that thing we can never know. Mm. Um, but it, it, there, by analogy, by metonymy, well, the, these that, are the, the ways. Well, the actual yeah. moment we yes. can never know yes. what leads up to it, of course. Yes, yes, yeah. Lives, gets lived through sometimes lived quite through painfully. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, right. Uh, and embraced by some and, and, and not held, off held, by held off by others, by yes, others. Right, um, right. Yeah, interesting. And, and so uh, where do you see this work going? What, uh uh, practically, in, in terms yeah. of the end, yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, we, for the last five weeks, as I said, we've been presenting our, um, our own work in progress. And um, I'm hoping to have a, to produce an edited volume. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge of that mm. is, uh, challenges I should say, because there, there are a few. Um, were we always able to talk across disciplines? No. Uh, was that productive? Yes. Um, did it have to do with methodologies? Yes, oftentimes. Mm. I remember early on in the, um, uh, in, in the residency, um, uh, I, I had raised the, the question of the anecdote. Mm. You know, Joel Feynman has written on mm. this, mm. and, and um, as something that exists between fiction and history, mm. which I think is a nice way of. Mm. of and one of the uh, people in, in the residence, residency said, well, you know, anecdotes uh, in my field um, are, are, you know, that's a pejorative term. <laughs> so, um, so uh, you know, that's a small example, but it oftentimes uh, we found ourselves talking. Uh, maybe the same language or using the same terminology or lexicon, but uh, have di completely different meanings behind them. And that was very productive and very I interesting. I mean, it's uh, interesting that there should be that kind of resistance, right? I, I mean, know. almost literally, it's the data point 
that that's an appendix too. Yes. That, that that it's an annex exactly. to exactly. what it is that you're s but speaking you're about. It's right. not. It, it's you know, and and of course, there's a kind of boundaried condition yeah. that puts it outside the yeah. possibility of invocation yeah. Yeah. in in some areas of, of of work and and obviously embraced or taken up yeah. uh, readily as revelatory uh, revelatory of uh, of conditions that might not be gotten at by Absolutely. you know uh, quantitative data analysis. points yeah right. 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 Or, or, right. or analytic uh, rigor right. and so on yeah. right. and so it's interesting that and and you would think in relation to something um, both as generalizable um, and, and as particular, I even in its generalizability, um, as as mor mortality, which we all face up to, you know, it almost is a cliche to say in our own ways. Yeah. Um, that uh, you would think that uh, the anecdotal would be absolutely revealing you know what um, I think in, in in relation to you know a certain aspect of the condition of dying. I think, David, I think you're so right, because I think at the end, everyone had s come to that realization, you know, that uh, in fact, throughout the whole, the 10 weeks, as I mentioned earlier, we were all telling anecdotes. Mm. Now, uh, uh, you know, okay, we can ask, well, how do you define that? But let's use Feynman's definition, you know, it's somewhere between fiction and, and, and a historical datum or something like that. And it, and it bridges those, but also puts them in a kind of conflict with one another. Um, we were all telling anecdotes about, um, well, uh, our own fears of death, uh, the deaths of others that uh, we have experienced and that meant something to us, the projected deaths of others that uh, you know we, we, we can think about, um, the, the death of the species, the death of the planet. I mean, and these are, in, in a sense, uh, th th these were not um, uh, discussions that had necessarily were based on some kind of scholarship or bibliography, but really on our own uh, senses of what these things could represent for us and how they might come about. So uh, I, I was going to uh, after after these ten weeks, I'm I'm I, I think you know the anecdote is just uh, the kind of central a kind of central uh, notion in thinking about something as broad as important as we might think fundamental foundational as what it means to live as. You know, Sigmund Bauman says to live with death. Mm -hmm. That that is mm -hmm. what we mm -hmm. we are doing. And and one of the so it's an, an edited volume is is the plan, and um, uh, the the challenges there are, uh, which is one of them if, of course is going to be to um, write it, an introduction, which is uh, <laughs> uh, going going to somehow bring these different works together because each of them is specific to to a discipline, but each of them also is bringing to bear on that m body of material and mm -hmm. bibliography um, the larger questions that we were discussing, like temporality, spatiality, mm -hmm. visibility, mm -hmm. uh, during the course of the ten weeks. So I'm, I'm optimistic. I mean, uh, you know, several uh, several of my colleagues are less optimistic than I am, but I, I am optimistic. Was there any discussion <laughs> of, of, of the afterlife? I mean, the death and relationship. Well, of course, afterlife. because eschatology yeah. is always well, part of yeah, what, um, exactly. and there are different uh, afterlives. Right. Uh, and I should say too that we came to the conclusion that there are different mortalities. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, so uh, I began the, the the quarter with talking about the myth of Ur and Plato's Republic, the mm. end of Republic, where um, you know he um, uh, postulates that some guy goes down and you know to the underworld mm. and, and looks around mm. and sees that well, what do we generally do down there? We we pick the bad soul, you know, the soul of the tyrant, mm. so that we can come back and eat our children. This mm. is what <laughs> the, the, the um, and yeah, so starting with that kind of eschatological philosophical um, myth, really, mm. um, in in uh, one of these um, uh, you know noble lies that that, that Plato tells. Um, there, th several couple of our people uh, of the people in the in the residency are in the, working in the history of religions or, or religious studies. Um, one works in Buddhism and Buddhist studies, and so you know that repeating. Uh, the question of repeating life and how one brings an end to that repeating life. Um, his work had to do with, again, what it meant to see the dead body at the moment of death and how one prepared mm -hmm. in the Buddhist tradition mm -hmm. for that death. Mm -hmm. um, one had to lie on one's, you know, in a certain way. There's, mm -hmm. there's a very specific gestural um, 
and postural uh, kinds of, um, of um, uh, practices that, mm -hmm. that uh, so um, yes, and of course uh, uh, the Hajj and, 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 and yeah. Muslim beliefs were also one it's of our other people. It's interesting, I mean, yeah. that, that, that sense of posture. Um, Isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's often the case that people, when threatened with death, you know, subject to traumatic, yeah. kind of invasive traumatic uh, injury, yeah. uh, resort to the fetal, right? I mean, uh, yes. you know, I think yes. I'm, of watching my, 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 one of my parents die, um, and in his case, um, you know, suffered a series of strokes, mm -hmm. and clearly was in a fetal position by the time his end came, but it's mm -hmm. a quite common condition, actually, it, it, to... Um, you know, the, 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 uh, a, a kind of almost psychic defense against fear, yeah. against the fear of dying, the fear of, of the traumatic, yes. uh, and so and on. And, the and the that relation between yeah. the beginning and the end. And right? the beginning and the yeah, end. Yeah, and and, and yeah. making the body, <coughs> the, the sight of that, in a very particular mm. gestural way, mm. as you're saying, mm. or postural mm. way. Mm. These, the, the Buddhist um, practitioners um, prepare for death and prepare, and, and, and you know, post photography. Mm. Uh, then prepared to be photographed mm, uh, mm, in, mm, in these uh, mm, positions. Mm. For, so that, for what? Mm. So that uh, those who came after mm. could learn something about, mm. you know, this, this, the, the end, uh, the way that they mm. uh, presented it. Mm. So, yeah, mm. so the afterlife. Uh, a sense of vulnerability. I mean, you, you think of John Lennon's famous <laughs> photograph of Yoko yes, Ono, right? Yeah, yes. I mean, that yeah. kind of fetal position yeah. uh, and so on, which is a and conveys a sense of vulnerability yeah. of the man sort of in relation to the yes. mother figure looking after yes. him. Yes, so yeah. kind of vulnerability is, uh, is a, a comp you know, uh, where do we see our own vulnerabilities in relationship to the vulnerabilities of others? Mm. And, um, and so that expression, maybe these postures though are both an expression of vulnerability but also a defense against that in some way, mm. um, uh, you know, because they, they are, um, codified in a way, mm. so that there's a kind of ritualistic mm. aspect to them, mm. and um, which, you know, could be a defense as mm. well, yeah. Yeah, so a very rich <laughs> subject area. Yes, uh, yes, One yes. to which we all have to face up. Yes, um, we do. Uh, to, at some point or another, if not continuously through our lives. Why are uh, we smiling about this, David? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's so rich and, I know. and interesting. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, uh, uh, a constant companion. Constant companion, um, yes. In, in, in various differentiated ways. Yeah. Um, so uh, delightful to hear about um, the ongoing work and we look forward to um, seeing what comes of it. Thank you. Well, may I say that um, uh, this kind of experience is um, without precedent in my experiences, you know, 25 years in the faculty. I mean, um, the ability for, for, for researchers and scholars in a number of different fields, and we, of course, we had one graduate student mm -hmm. too, and that was just wonderful to have her there. Um, and to really try to talk ac across and within and between mm. um, our own siloed, often siloed, and I think my own field is mm. particularly true, <laughs> that's true for, um, is just a, a Everyone in the group uh, expressed this same uh, this same opinion and same uh, gratitude, really, for the opportunity for us to come together. We thank you and mm -hmm. the UCHRI staff. Um, it was it's been a, a wonderful experience. Thank you very much. Thank you.